is a webinar on what to do when di you're diagnosed with COVID-19. Um, these are the students who um, contributed to uh, the information um, and who will be presenting today. Uh, so here are our learning objectives. By the end of this webinar, participants will be able to understand COVID-19 testing eligibility and where to find local testing sites, identify common versus serious symptoms of COVID-19, tell the difference between quarantine and isolation, care for yourself at home while you have COVID-19, whether you live alone or with others, determine when it's safe to end quarantine, understand contact tracing and why it's important, identify potential long-term effects of COVID-19 on the body and mind, and to know whether having COVID-19 grants immunity from another infection and whether someone who has had COVID-19 can be vaccinated. So who should get tested? People who have symptoms of COVID-19. If you've had close contact, which means within six feet for a total of 15 minutes or more over a 24 hour period with someone who, with confirmed COVID-19. If you learn that you're in close contact, you should wait five days before getting tested, self quarantine at home while waiting to get tested and fully vaccinated people with no COVID-19 symptoms do not need to be tested following an exposure. What type of tests are available? The COVID-19 tests are available that can test for current infections or past infections. There's viral tests, which tell you if you have a current infection. The two types of viral tests are nucleic acid amplification test, which the example is the P PCR test, and the antigen tests, which are the rapid tests. There's also an antibody test. This tells you if you had a past infection. So the antibody test should not be used to diagnose a current infection. Symptoms of COVID-19. People with COVID-19 have reported a wide range of symptoms from mild to severe illness. Symptoms may appear two to 14 days after exposure to the virus. People with these symptoms may have COVID-19. Fever or chills, cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, new loss of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea, conjunctivitis, which is pink eye. Recommendations for a positive test. The New York State COVID resources for testing positive say that you should appropriately take part in isolation or quarantine. Essential workers may return to work if they are not having symptoms, if they have not had direct contact with someone known to have COVID-19, but must continue to monitor symptoms and adhere to social distancing guidelines. COVID Alert NY is the voluntary anonymous exposure notification smartphone app. And the New York State info sheet can be found on coronavirus.health.ny.gov. Suffolk County COVID resources for testing positive are similar to New York State. Those that stood out were making a list of close and proximate contacts and continue to monitor symptoms and call the doctor or go to the hospital if necessary. <clears throat> the Suffolk County info sheet can be found on suffolkcountymy.gov. Who is at increased risk of severe illness? Severe illness from COVID-19 is defined as hospitalization, admission to the ICU, intubation, or mechanical ventilation, or death. Adults of any age with the following conditions are at increased risk of severe illness from the virus that causes COVID-19. Cancer, chronic kidney disease, COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, Down syndrome, heart conditions like heart failure, coronary artery disease, or cardiomyopathies, immunocompromised states like weakened immune systems, obesity, which is defined as a BMI greater than 30 kilograms per meter squared, but less than 40 kilograms per meter squared, severe obesity, which is a BMI greater than 40, pregnancy, sickle cell disease, smoking, and type 2 diabetes mellitus. When to seek emergency medical attention. If someone is showing any of these signs, seek emergency medical care immediately. 
trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, new confusion, inability to wake or stay awake, pale gray or blue colored skin, lips or nail beds, depending on their skin tone. Note this list does not include all possible emergency symptoms. Please call your medical provider for any other symptoms that are severe or concerning to you. Call 911 or call your local emergency facility. Notify the operator that you are seeking care for someone who has or is suspected of having COVID-19. So we just wanted to talk for a moment about the difference between quarantine and isolation because there is a slight difference. Um, so to quarantine technically means to keep someone who might have been exposed to the virus away from others while isolation is defined as keeping someone who is um, infected with the virus away from others, even within the home. Um, so we're gonna talk about effective quarantining um, and steps to stay safe. So the first thing um, you should do is stay home except to get medical care if needed. Um, do not visit public areas as doing so may expose others to the virus. You wanna get rest, stay hydrated and eat healthy nutrient dense foods like fruits and vegetables. Um, and if you need to, you can take out over the counter cold and flu medications um, like NSAIDs, um, like Tylenol, ibuprofen, aspirin, um, expectorants or antihistamines if you are able to. Um, and you do want to call your doctor before, this isn't medical advice, so do call your doctor before taking um, any medications or with any concerns of severe symptoms. Um, and if you start to have emergency symptoms, those were, that were listed on slide nine, call 911 or go to the nearest ER. Um, so you also want to monitor your symptoms just to um, track the progression and uh, to see if you're getting better or worse. And you wanna get tested as we discussed earlier um, and wear a mask over your nose and mouth. So um, keeping six, at least six feet away from other people, even within your own home. If you're living alone, you don't need to wear a mask, but if you live with other people, it's important to still wear a mask when you're in the house. And um, pets actually have tested positive for COVID-19 in the past. So you do wanna take precautions around them. Um, ideally, you would have somebody else take care of the pet during the quarantine period. But if that's not possible, um, then you would want to wear a mask and um, try not to interact with them too much. Okay, um, you should be covering your coughs and your sneezes. Um, the best practice is to use a tissue, throw it away immediately, and then wash your hands. Um, sneezing or coughing into your elbow isn't as good as using a disposable tissue. Um, you wanna wash your hands often. The best um, thing to do is to use soap and water and wash for at least 20 seconds. And if you don't have soap and water immediately available, you may also use hand sanitizer. Um, if you're using hand sanitizer, you should rub your hands together, covering all surfaces until they feel dry. Um, you should try to avoid sharing household items with people who are not quarantining. So this includes cups, eating utensils, towels, and bedding. Um, and you want to clean high touch surfaces every day. So this would include counters, sinks, phones, remote controls, doorknobs, toilets, and keyboards. Um, and to do this, you should use household cleaners and disinfectants following the instructions on the products like Lysol wipes, Clorox wipes, stuff like that. Um, and ideally the person um, or people in quarantine would be cleaning their own living spaces. And then those who are not quarantining would be cleaning the shared living spaces and their own living spaces so that you don't aren't mixing too much. And if you can avoid it, don't share a bathroom with healthy or unexposed people. Um, just a couple of resources. Um, if you, you know, have, uh, don't have someone to shop for you, um, there are, are a lot of grocery delivery services that have popped up recently. Um, some good ones are Peapod through Stop and Shop. Um, you can visit peapod.com to get um, to order from them. Uh, another service is Instacart. They have lots of grocery stores, including Aldi, CVS, ShopRite, Family Dollar, and a lot more. Um, and they're at instacart.com. They also have a mobile phone app. 
Um, and there are lots more. Um, likely your favorite grocery store will have a delivery service going by now. So you should just check with them on their website. And then um, for those who live in the city, um, if you, um, uh, if you're a New York City resident who tested positive for or has symptoms of COVID-19, you might qualify for a free hotel room if you're unable to quarantine safely in the home. Um, so like if the home doesn't have a space to socially distance or has shared bathrooms or if there's a vulnerable person living in the home and you can call 311 for more information for that program. So these are the CDC guidelines for when you can be around others again. If, you're sim if you test positive for COVID-19 and you have symptoms, you can end quarantine 10 days after the symptoms first appeared. And if you have gone 24 hours without a fever, without using fever reducing medications and other symptoms of COVID-19 are improving, um, the loss of taste or smell, if you have that symptom, it may persist for weeks to months, so this does not have to be gone in order to end isolation. For people who test positive and are asymptomatic, if you continue to have no symptoms, you can be with others after 10 days have passed since your positive test. And if you develop symptoms after testing positive, follow the symptomatic guidelines I just spoke about. So COVID-19 and the COVID vaccine. Can you get the COVID-19 vaccine if you've had COVID-19? So the rules are that once you have recovered from COVID-19 and met the criteria for ending isolation, you can be vaccinated for COVID-19. This also applies if you test positive for COVID-19 after your first dose of the vaccine. So you would go get your second dose once you've ended isolation. Um, if you have been treated for COVID-19 with monoclonal antibodies or convalescent plasma, you should wait 90 days before receiving the vaccine. Um, okay, so let's talk about contact tracing. Um, what is it? Uh, contact tracing involves getting in touch with people who have tested positive for COVID-19, uh, as well as anyone who may have been exposed to COVID-19 through contact with someone who tested positive. Contact tracers are trained professionals working through the New York State Department of Health uh, residents of Suffolk County will be contacted by someone from the County Department of Health, the SCDOH. Um, contact tracing is always confidential. A uh, contact tracer will never ask for your name. They will know it when they call you. Uh, ask for your social security number. Ask for any private financial information identify the person who listed you as a close contact or vice versa, ask for credit card information, or ask to take control of or download software to your phone, tablet, or computer. Uh, during a call, a contact tracer will ask how you're feeling, ask if you need resources to help you stay healthy, such as groceries, supplies, childcare, and medical care, or supplies. Um, explain how long you need to stay inside and away from other people and offer housing resources if you cannot do so safely at home. Ask questions to figure out how you may have been infected if you have tested positive. And ask for names and contact information of everyone you had close contact with recently if you have tested positive. Uh, you can be confident the person contacting you is an official New York State contact tracer if you get a call from NYS Contact Tracing, 518-387-9993. It is vitally important to answer this call to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Uh, for more information on contact tracing in New York State, you can call 888-364-364. 3065 or visit coronavirus.health.ny.gov slash new dash york dash state dash contact dash tracing. The site also has information in Bengali, simplified Chinese, Haitian Creole, Korean, Russian, and Spanish. 
Uh, you can learn more about contact tracing in Suffolk County at um, this URL I made up because the actual URL is enormous. Um, but you can just go to tinyurl.com slash SCDOH contact dash tracing, and it'll take you to uh, the actual Suffolk County site. So how long will you test positive for COVID-19? After recovering from COVID-19, you may test positive for up to three months. You should only be tested again if you develop new symptoms of possible COVID-19. And you can return to work as long as you have met criteria for ending isolation. So while most persons um, recover and return to normal health, um, some patients can have symptoms that can last for weeks or even months after recovery from acute illness. Multi-year studies are underway to further investigate. The most common long-term symptoms are shortened of breath, uh, fatigue, cough, heart palpitations, chest pain, tightness in chest, joint and muscle pain, headaches, dizziness, forgetfulness, difficulty concentrating, nausea and diarrhea, or depression and or anxiety. According to Lovickson, adults and children appeared to have the same long-term results. The study was limited by size and not able to examine children through other tests to rule out a uh, different diagnosis. Similarly, adults may have long-term symptoms that could be exasperated by comorbid, that is um, diseases they had before um, they were not aware of the infection. Next slide, please. Other less common symptoms are heart inflammation, lung function abnormalities, acute kidney, kidney disease, rashes, hair loss, loss of smell and taste, insomnia. Um, these symptoms usually occur in people who had severe um, comorbid disorders, that is disorders they had prior to um, COVID, like diabetes, um, heart disease, uh, severe obesity, or something like that. They would normally not occur in people who didn't have um, anything going on before COVID. Um, so for the most part, I wouldn't worry about it, about getting these, unless you had severe things or you were at risk um, for infection, like with cancer or immunosuppressing uh, disorders. The long-term significance of these effects are not yet known, but the CDC will continue to, act, to actively investigate and provide updates as new data emerge, which can inform COVID-19 clinical care as well as the public health response to COVID-19. Next, yeah. It is possible to get COVID another time while with older people being the most susceptible. Um, so in the study safe run so far, um, younger people um, have less than like 30% chance while older people had like 47 or more percent of a chance of getting it again. Uh, the severity of symptoms varies by the individual depending on how severe the first infection was. So if you only had a mild infection, there's a chance you could, if you were to get reinfected, a more severe um, form of illness. It also depends on the variant of uh, the COVID uh, brand, I guess, uh, changes in overall health. So if you become um, you know, suppressed where you could re you know, get it again, like if you were to have cancer, if you have lupus or any other immune disease disorder. Um, vaccination should help minimize the effects of infections regardless of the strain. Uh, booster shots can help reduce the chances of severe reinfections, but may not prevent them. Some have suggested that these might not be reinfections at all, but ongoing immune responses. However, more research is needed to support this theory. Next. Until we have a general consensus from recent and ongoing studies, please continue to wear masks in public with people outside of your household. So you still have a chance of getting reinfected and it's important to protect yourself or protect others. You should also social distance by six feet, 
avoid crowds or areas with little room to social distance and wash your hands. That's one of the biggest things. Wash your hands and, you know, maintain clean surfaces around yourself so that there's no chance of anybody, you know, getting affected accidentally, you know, by like, let's say, you know, if they sneezed on something and, you know, you didn't clean it up and, you know, those particles ended up on the surface, you should clean the areas around you. All right, next. Uh, as of March 27th, 28th, there have been 3 million uh, or about so cases of COVID administered. A uh, total of 1,508 positive COVID case weekend cases. Um, about 20.4% of the total um, Suffolk County um, residents have at least had one vaccine dose. There were 57 people hospitalized during the weekend. There were 48 discharges and a total of three deaths. Continue. All right, who's next? Well, it's me. <clears throat> um, right. So the here are some uh, testing resources in Suffolk County. Um, there is um, an extremely uh, long URL, but if you just go to SuffolkCountyNY.gov, you can search for you know COVID testing sites, and I think there's also just a link right at the top of that site. Um, there's hotspot COVID-19 testing at uh, sunysuffolk.edu slash coronavirus slash COVID-19 dash testing dash site dot JSP. Um, there's also New York State's find a test site near you at coronavirus.health.ny.gov. Um, slash find dash test dash site dash near dash you. Uh, you can also uh, Google those terms, hotspot COVID-19 testing uh, Suffolk County, or Google New York State, like find a test site. You, you will get these results. Uh, please call the testing site or your healthcare provider beforehand. If you go to a test site run by New York State, there is never a charge for your test. If you go to a test site operated by local governments, private companies, including pharmacies and medical practices, or not-for-profit organizations, check with a testing site and your insurer in advance to confirm you will not be responsible for any fees. Uh, New York State regularly adds testing sites for COVID-19. Uh, for questions about testing eligibility or access for testing, Call the state COVID-19 hotline at 888-364-3065 or visit the state health department's COVID-19 testing site at covid19screening.health.ny.gov where you can take an online assessment of your need to be tested. A state health department official will contact you after you submit your assessment. Uh, you can also call Stony Brook Medicine's triage phone line at 631-638-1320 from 8 a.m. to midnight, Monday through Friday, to speak with a registered nurse about testing. Uh, for more information on walk-in clinics, pharmacies, and other locations offering COVID-19 testing in Suffolk County, call 311 or visit the County Health Department site. Um, SuffolkCountyMY.gov slash departments slash health dash services slash health dash bulletins slash novel dash coronavirus or again just go to SuffolkCountyNY.gov and look for the health department from there. Uh, they have um, the health department website makes it really easy for you to find what you need whether um, it's um, resources or testing sites um, so I would definitely check it out. Um, there's some support groups in Suffolk County. They might be helpful if um, you're quarantining uh, or isolating alone. Um, you might, uh, might want to reach out and talk to someone 
Um, for example, like the National Alliance on Mental Illness in New York State, they have support groups. Uh, the Association of Mental Health and Wellness, um, they have uh, support groups across Suffolk County. Um, Psychology Today, if you need like to speak to like a counselor for long term, um, there are there are a lot of um, there are a lot of options if you're if you're sick and alone. Um, here's some more uh, support groups. Um, and then uh, we have some resources available in Spanish, like the Catholic Charities of Long Island, um, Project Warmth, uh, SAMHSA, and now um, we will take questions. So please um, feel free to um, unmute yourself and ask, or you could um, pop a question in the chat. And um, we've got a lot of, um, we just give you a lot of information. We'd be happy to give you more if you need it. Right. So um, we did have a question uh, in the chat to me, um, which was well, going over the uh, the webinar poll answers. Um, and also it looks like someone would like some uh, information on travel. So if someone, I know um, like I, I can't actually get that because I am screen sharing, but if someone else wants to pop that in the chat. So one of the um, professors, uh, Professor Stoby just wrote in the chat, international travel requires 12 day quarantine regardless of vaccine status according to the New York State Department of Health. I believe on the CDC website, um, different countries are listed at different levels and you can see the different requirements per country um, there. I don't know if you want to, if there's anything else you want to say, Professor Stoby, about travel more besides your comment. Uh, domestic travel seems to be more relaxed right now, but the, again, New York State Department of Health has made a determination that they still want this 10-day quarantine. You can minimize that if you test between days three and five on your return from international, but you will still need to quarantine a minimum of seven days. And then again, that's for international travel. Different jobs seem to require different uh, options. It's a little bit odd that it's not standard across the board, but this is from the DOH. Yeah, I've sent a link in the CDC from the CDC website in the chat, and that outlines like the basic travel plans, but it might differ depending on the country you visit. So I would check with the specific country, but you need to get tested three to five days after traveling and stay home and self-quarantine for seven days. Um, if you don't get tested, then you need to stay home for 10 days after travel. Um, and so, yeah, they had on this website, you can find all of the rules for the specific, um, specific countries. I believe the CDC also has a site for if you're traveling between states and there's a travel finder you can put in your location, whether it's a state or a country, and it'll give you the different guidelines for each state. And then also always check with the airline that you're traveling with before, before leaving for what they require because different airlines might have different requirements than like government requirements. And same with employers. Employers might have different requirements. Um, if you're essential worker for post-travel testing and return to work requirements. Yeah, and um, I think Kaylee put uh, the state, um, the New York state travel uh, page as well. So, I mean, if, if for specifics, but I mean, it really sounds like the CDC is very is on top of it for you. Um, so yeah, I had a DM from another one of our esteemed faculty 
who wanted to uh, go over the results, um, or sorry, not the results, but the answers to uh, the, the webinar poll. Um, so I'd be happy to do that. Um, I Gosh, I hope I can remember. So number one, if you were in close contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19, how long should you wait to get tested yourself? Um, and the answer is five days. Um, true or false, antibody or serology tests can be used to diagnose a current COVID-19 infection. Um, that is false. Those are for testing whether you have had COVID-19. Um, so two ways to keep yourself from possibly exposing others to COVID-19, quarantining, and isolating. Which one do you do when you have tested positive and are experiencing symptoms? That is, um, oh gosh, it's isolating, right? Right, I can't even, I broke this, I can't remember them all. Yeah, it's um, isolating. Thank you. Um, uh, so yes, obviously it's important to know that and remember it. Um, so, okay. Um, which of the following is a sign that someone with COVID-19 needs emergency care? Uh, trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, pale gray or blue colored skin, lips or nail beds, depending on their skin tone, or all of the above is absolutely all of the above. And there are more signs too. Um, be really careful with someone who has COVID. Um, True or false, you do not need the COVID-19 vaccine if you've already recovered from COVID-19. Um, that is false. You should definitely get vaccinated. Um, let's see, uh, there's still, uh, what's uh, one thing in contact tracer will never ask you for during a call? Uh, your name names and contact information of people you've recently come in contact with, information on how you might have been infected and by whom, how you're feeling. Uh, it is your name. A contact tracer will know who you are. Um, and again, if they call, it'll be from New York State contact tracing. So please, please answer it. Uh, finally, true or false, after recovering from COVID-19, you should only be retested if you experience symptoms again. Um, and that, uh, that is true. So um, yeah, I, I mean, I hope everyone has learned a little bit. I mean, I certainly learned a lot from um, my co-presenters. They have a lot of information. And I appreciate that, you know, we all shared it. Uh, does anyone have any more questions? Um, okay, so I guess if no one has any more questions, then we can just let you know just a little bit about the Healthy Libraries program. Um, so uh, Stony Brook Medicine's Healthy Libraries program, or HELP, is an interdisciplinary team of public health, nursing, social work, and library science students whose aim is to provide evidence-based health information, screening, and case management to a diverse community of patrons in the public library setting. Refer patrons to promote access to appropriate health and social services programs locally that will address their health and social support needs. And we offer one on one appointments for free. Um, please get in contact with us if you would like a one on one appointment or uh, otherwise would like more information about uh, lots of topics uh, we have uh, webinars on. Um, we have a YouTube channel, we have a Facebook page, 
We have a website, which is publichealth.stonybrookmedicine.edu slash healthy underscore libraries underscore program. And our email is healthy underscore li libraries underscore program at stonybrookmedicine.edu. Um, you can also give us a call at 631-216-8220. Uh, um, and if you hear my cat yodeling in the background, I apologize. She feels left out. Um, and I think that's uh, I think that's all we have. All right, yeah. So thank you, everyone. Thank you to all the students for putting together the presentation and for the libraries for hosting us and all of you know, library patrons for joining us. Again, as Mev said, feel free to contact us. Um, it's completely free if you have any questions or want any health resources or any information. And I guess if there's no more questions, that'll be it for today. All righty, take care everyone.